Today it's the big one, the Serrano for radar and air-to-air -air weapons. With a search range of up to 60 nautical miles it's used to locate and engage aircraft with the Matra R530F EM semi-active radar homing missile. The 530 missile can be mounted on either the inboard or wing pylons or a single missile on the fuselage station. Before we start, you can install or remove the sun shield whilst on the ground with the canopy open to your preference. This is done by clicking the lug above. This can also be set in the mission editor, we'll remove it to make things easier to see. Let's take a closer look. In the center we've our radar scope. Top left with the radar function indicator, this serves to tell us what mode our radar is in. Today we're only interested in HA, high altitude, our general purpose search mode, V1, the ground visualization mode, and TL, air to air telemetry, a visual close combat mode. We can cycle the selected mode with the radar function switch on the scope. As the module develops in early access, additional radar modes will be added. In the scope itself, we have the Alidade, our radar cursor, distance markers, radar sweep, and the horizon line, which shows our angle of bank. Over to the right side, we have the range scale. This correlates to the distance markers within the scope. With 60 selected, each bar equals 10 nautical miles range. The same for 35. However, with 15 selected, each marker is 5 nautical miles, and on the 7 mile scope range, it's 2 nautical miles for every line. The scope represents a 60 degree cone extending 30 degrees either side of our nose. Detected aircraft appear as radar echoes, a small, bright rectangle distinct from the background noise. You can read both the range and direction to any detected aircraft by estimating its position relative to these two axes. Controls for the radar are scattered throughout the cockpit. On the right side console armament control panel, we have the radar power switch. Below that we've got the manual radar line selection switch. Think of this like the radar bar setting found in other aircraft, giving us either one or four lines. Just inwards from the armament control panel we have the scope control box. This gives us dials to control the brightness and position of various elements within our radar scope. Over on the left wall we've got the radar close combat mode selector. Behind the throttle we've got the radar control stick. On the base we can set the radar scan width either 60 or 30 degrees wide. When set to 30 degrees the sweep will follow the Alidade, our radar cursor. Opposite side we have the radar range selector from 60 down to 7 nautical mile ranges. Left of that the elevation and difference button which toggles the elevation control between degrees and altitude offset modes. On the stick itself we've got the radar antenna elevation increase and decrease switches. On the side we have the gain control which adjusts the brightness of radar returns inside the scope. On the front we've got a two sided trigger. Top enables APS pre-select authorization mode used to tag a radar return without locking it. Whereas the bottom half is the APC Continuous Pursuit Authorization. This locks our target and allows radar guided weapons use. At the base of the stick there's the release lever to unlock our radar. And here's where it gets a little odd. Rolling the stick left or right will adjust your cursor on the scope left to right as you might expect. Whereas twisting the stick counterclockwise increases the cursor range, whilst clockwise decreases the range, effectively moving our cursor up and down. Note that our cursor cannot exceed a range of 35 nautical miles as it's the maximum distance we can achieve a lock. Alright, so that's it for radar controls and display. Let's quickly look at ground mapping mode. Cycle the function dial around until we reach the V1 visualize position. With this selected, our radar will now paint terrain on the radar screen. You may find it useful to increase the remembrance dial to reduce the fade rate. As we reduce range scale, the details can be picked out more clearly. Beware of large black radar shadows, these indicate a mountain or hill blocking our line of sight. The radar in visualize mode can be a handy tool to help navigate around coastlines and large geographic features, but is not used for targeting. So let's move on to air to air and launching the Matra 530F EM. As we established radar echoes, the rectangles in our scope will appear when an aircraft is detected, and we can read the range and heading off of the display, but no altitude information is available. You'll notice the echo does not appear every single sweep of our radar and it's all down to this. Let's visualize that a little clearer. The radar doesn't just sweep left to right but also increments up and down. By default our radar is in a four line scan pattern. After each sweep the radar increments to the next line, alternating between high and low lines like so. First sweeping right on line one, then reversing, covering line 2 on the bottom half, and then line 3 on the top half, and line 4 on the bottom once more. 
before returning to the start, effectively alternating between above and below us. This means if a target is within the top half of our scan volume it will only appear during a radar sweep from left to right, whereas a target below us will only appear from a sweep right to left. This allows us to gleam a little relative altitude information. A target in the middle would appear during both lines 3 and 2 as they overlap. Now this doesn't present any issue to us locking a target, but it does provide us slower updates on the radar echo. We can narrow the sweep to 30 allowing for a faster increment between each line, or we can manually switch to one line, but this will make our vertical search very narrow making radar elevation very strict if we want to maintain contact. We can adjust the radar elevation with the two buttons, however our radar does not provide us with direct reference to the altitude we're scanning, just direct reference to the angle in degrees to the bottom left of our display, so be very careful with adjustments. As a result I'd recommend sticking to the default 4 line setup and flying roughly co altitude with our target to place it within our radar scan. Alright, let's shoot that missile. We'll set our master arm and select the Matra missiles by illuminating both the left fuselage and right 530 push buttons. On the HUD we'll now spot two triangles, indicating our selected stations. Locate your target with the radar, make use of AWACS or GCI assistance over the radio if available. Fly towards the aircraft by centering it on the scope. Manually reduce the range scale as we close to make it easier to read. We can enter radar locking mode by pressing and holding the APS-APC lever lock on, the lower of the two triggers. The display will blank and attempt to lock anything at our cursor's range and azimuth. If you cannot achieve a lock in a few seconds, allow the echo time to get closer and try again. If you wish to drop a lock, press the radar control switch unlocking lever. Whilst lock on mode is active by holding down the lock lever, you can slew the cursor around and the radar will attempt to lock the first thing it sees regardless of if you've already picked up a radar echo of your target. With the target locked we can see we're in a narrow scanning mode, focused on the echo, fly to keep it centred on the display. On the right side of the scope we've closure, the horizontal bar indicates the rate, at the top we're closing fast and at the bottom we're closing slowly, in the gap we're neither closing or extending the distance between us. If the bar is on the bottom, our target is getting further away from us. On our HUD site we have the interception queue fly the aircraft form into it, to be steered to the predicted intercept point, after missile launch it will steer you onto the target. We can visually see the target we've locked, overlaid by the square icon. You'll notice we have two small circles now, each one indicates our Matra missile seeker heads have detected the target we're illuminating with our radar. At this point it's a good idea to call the AWACS to declare our target, informing us if it's hostile or friendly. Our aircraft does not have an IFF interrogator so be very careful what you engage. The 530 has a nominal range of 10 nautical miles in ideal conditions head on, or about 3 nautical miles for rear aspect shots. As we get closer, the in-range queue will appear, a small green solid circle on the HUD site. Press and hold the Sight Recorder Weapons Release switch to launch a missile. Maintain your lock all the way to target impact. If we fly within minimum range, we will see a red circle. Now let's quickly talk close combat modes. We'll select the telemetry mode by cycling the close combat switch mode upwards. This places our radar into a box scan mode as seen on our scope. The radar is scanning an area roughly equal to that of our HUD site glass, out to a distance of roughly 7 nautical miles. Simply fly your nose visually onto a target and it will automatically acquire a lock. From there we could launch a missile. You can quickly select magic or sidewinder missiles and the cannon by pressing the C plus M or SW R button on the throttle. When enabled you will see a green light beside our HUD illuminate. Our wingtip IR missiles and cannon are now selected. The station selection triangles will appear and the gyro sight pipper is used to aim our cannon. We can toggle the gyro calculated solution between 300 and 600 meters by pressing the cannon 300 600 meter missile lock and unlock button on the throttle. The gyro pipper gives an approximate solution to assist aiming based on own aircraft conditions and selected range. Scoring hits takes a healthy dose of educated guesses and setting the correct sight distance for the engagement.
For our magic or sidewinder, we simply need to aim and place the target on the top of our HUD sight. Once locked, you'll see the circular seeker tracking indicator, and hear a tone. Press and hold the sight recorder and weapons release switch to fire a missile. Once you're done, leave the IR missiles and gun quick selection mode. By pressing the C plus M or SW, the selection switch, which is hidden on the left wall, to return back to normal armament selection. Don't forget to set the magic or sidewinder switch correctly on your armament panel during startup. The process is much the same for the IR Matra 530 variant, but you'll need to select them from the armament control panel. As the module develops further in early access, we'll gain access to additional modes and features, but for now, this is everything you need to know to get started with air-to-air weapons in the Mirage F1CE. Hope you've enjoyed, and take care.